what would you do if you only had one day of travel in Singapore? This is the question I'm gonna answer you in this video here. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to this channel now. For those who are new here, my name is Jemo. I've been staying for the past four and a half years here in Singapore, so definitely you can trust on my recommendations. Now, let's get started. There are four areas I'm gonna show you in this one day trip. First of all, Chinatown. Second, Kampung Glam. Little India and Marina Bay. Let's pretend you're arriving in Changi Airport at 9 in the morning. It takes about one hour to reach Chinatown if you take the train. Once you reach the station, you have to take exit A. That's the one that leads you to Pagoda Street. And here we are, look at this festive market. Isn't it just beautiful? Now, I do have to say, most of the shots were taken during Chinese New Year, so if you come in any other time, it's gonna be much less crowded, but also less decorated. There are plenty of shops that sell various kinds of Chinese souvenirs, such as lanterns, paintings, statues, or even chopsticks. Latest when arriving in this street here, you should have figured out what is the national obsession of all Singaporeans, it is food. Being here, there's gonna be obviously mostly Chinese food. However, there are also Indian or even Malay stalls. There are two restaurants I would like to highlight here. Authentic Manchurian cuisine. And the second one is Xiaolongkan that serves chili hot pot. Chinatown is more than only shops or restaurants. It also hosts various religions. Here I would like to highlight the Holy Tooth Relic Buddha Temple. Entering the temple, it's gonna be quite a change in atmosphere, but somehow very peaceful. There are various processions being held here, and what I'm very sure about is if you come on any Saturday afternoon between 2 to 3 p.m., they're gonna hold a mass prayer. I would like to share a little secret here, you should pay a visit to the upper floors. When leaving the interior, you should turn to your left and take the elevator, first going to level M from where you can enjoy a perfect view down on the prayer hall. Also interesting may be the third floor where there is the relic of the temple. And don't forget to pay a visit to the rooftop with its beautiful orchid garden. After you're done with the temple, you should walk along Southbridge Road back to Pagoda Street. There you can best witness Singapore's diversity. In only this street you have a Buddhist temple, a Hindu temple and even a South Indian mosque. All of them being part of Chinatown. After seeing all these things, I suggest to proceed to Kampung Glam. To reach this place you have to take the downtown line. It's gonna take you about 10 minutes of travel to reach Bugis and another 5 minutes of walking. Here we are in Kampung Glam, the second station of this trip. This is more of an Islamic neighborhood. In fact, a lot of Arab traders used to live here. However, these days it's predominantly populated with Malays and Indian Muslim. The main attractions here are the Sultan Mosque and Haji Lane. Here you're gonna find various Middle Eastern restaurants as well as Turkish lamps and Persian carpet shops. For example, Amir and Son sells antique handmade Persian carpets. Another area I would like to show you is Haji Lane, probably the most hipster environment in all Singapore. Here you can find various shops that sell different kinds of curiosities such as Marvel portraits or vintage items. There are a lot of restaurants and cafes here. There is even a selfie cafe, believe it or not, one of the most innovative cafes I've ever visited. After sunset, Haji Lane transforms itself into an open-air clubbing space with various live bands. It is one of the most lively neighborhoods if you want to go out. In my opinion, one of the best areas to have a chilled beer. Going to Little India, you again have to take the downtown line. It's gonna take you about 5 minutes of travel. 
Arriving in Little India at your third station, you're gonna realize how culturally diverse Singapore is. In fact, I call it Asia for beginners because some of the biggest Asian cultures are represented in this country. Arriving at the MRT station, I recommend you to take XED to Race Court Road. That's the one that leads you to the famous colorful house. Serangoon Road is the heart of Little India. Pretty much all of the important attractions can be found around here. Now if you follow the schedule I provide you in this video, then you should arrive here at about 4.30 pm. That's exactly when the temples open their gates. The Hindu community in Singapore is very welcoming. Even if they're holding any important processions, tourists are very welcome. The music they play during prayer is very unique. That's why I decided to provide a little sample. Walking further along Serangoon Road, you're gonna pass a lot of shops that sell either golden jewelries, Hindu statues, typical Singaporean souvenirs or even mobile gadgets. I also advise you to go to any of the side roads. There you can find a lot of street art or wet markets. Being here on a wet market, I advise you to try some orange or brown banana. They're very tasty. As I mentioned to you earlier, Singapore is a very popular foodie destination and Indian cuisine is one of the best you can find in this country. There are two restaurants I would like to present. The first one is Kailash Purbat that serves authentic Indian vegetarian food. The dishes are very delicious and don't forget to try the Malai Kulfi, one of the best desserts ever had. The other one is Jaggi's, a northern Indian restaurant. I recommend you to try the butter chicken and the sea kebab, as well as the naan, the typical Indian flatbread. After seeing all these things, I suggest we move to Marina Bay, the last area I'm gonna show you in this one day trip. In order to reach this place, again, you have to take the downtown line. I know, it's definitely gonna be your best friend in your one day of travel. Marina Bay is somewhat engineered up to perfection. It really best highlights Singapore's future vision of becoming a smart city. Already being here in Marina Bay Sands Mall, you can see how amazing this place is. It's probably one of the best I've ever visited. Look down, they even have something like an artificial Venice canal. You can even take a ride on the boat. It's gonna cost you 10 Singapore dollars. In here, you should also check out the Rasapura food court that has a wide variety of cuisines. Now, before heading to Bayfront, I suggest we first go to Gardens by the Bay. For that, I want to share a little secret passage. If you take this very long escalator, first of all, you're gonna have an amazing view down to the shopping mall. And after that, you walk on a very long bridge that leads you through the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. At the other end, there is a platform from where we have a great view on gardens by the bay. Once arrived there, you're gonna find yourself in a surreal environment that makes you feel like you get lost in Avatar. The highlight is the Garden Rhapsody, a light show that takes place twice a day at 7.45 and 8.45 p.m. After that, you should head straight to Bayfront. There's another spectacle awaiting you. The water and laser show is played every day at 8 and 9 p.m. Having traveled a lot and seen many laser and water shows, this is definitely the best I've ever seen. I've watched the show for about 20 plus times and I'm still not bored of it. Other things that you can do around here are the DNA Helix Bridge and the Marina Bay Sky Park. The latter you should save for the very end. It's the best attraction to conclude your trip. On the platform you have a fantastic view on Singapore skyline. It is beautiful at any time of the day, but personally I favor coming here during sunset or late night. We've reached the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed watching this episode. Please feel free to leave your feedback. I'm more than interested to hear your opinion. If you found my travel recommendations useful and haven't subscribed yet, then please hit that button now. For those who wonder where I'm recording all the voiceover scenes, 
I'm here in the Chinese and Japanese garden. It's very easy to reach by MRT and very much worth the visit. So that's it from my side. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Stay tuned, next is Malacca.